Well, hey there, folks. Welcome to the Slow Roamer channel. My name is Alex. Megan, my partner, is inside the van. And in today's video, we're gonna do another van tour. I did a van tour of the van when we first finished it about five and a half, six months ago. And in today's video, I'm just gonna go into a lot more detail. A few of you have been asking about certain things in the van, curious to know how things have been going since we moved in and been traveling. And I'm gonna show you a few of the innovations that we've added to the van since we've started uh, traveling. And uh, yeah, just really show you into all the nooks and crannies. So uh, let's get after that. All right, so as things often go, we're gonna start on the exterior of the vehicle and slowly move our way inwards to the interior. Starting at the front here, you can see that Betty is a 2006 Chevy Express 2500. She's got the 4.8 liter V8, and that's pretty much all the detail you need. She's originally just a bare bones uh, Chevy Express delivery van uh, that we've kind of souped up a lot. So this right here, this is a custom low profile front bumper that I built myself. And I built it with some very specific things in mind. So the first I wanted a really, really good approach angle. So that is the um, angle at which we can approach a steep incline and drive up it without the front end of the vehicle hitting uh, that approach. Second, I wanted to be able to carry a winch. So we actually have a 10,000 pound rugged ridge winch inside the bumper. It's got synthetic line and this doomahickey. I hope never to use this, to be honest, but it's there in the event that we do. Thus far, this bumper has been great. We haven't uh, scraped the front end or anything like that. It's given us the approach angle that I desired. So, super happy with that. And we'll just do a quick review of these lights here. We've got diode dynamic lights on the center. These are the, just their pods. This is a like um, a flood light bar. And then we've got these knob sight spots on the outside. I love these. These are fantastic lights. They're US made. Um, these guys shine super far. This guy does a really great spread. The knob sight lights, they're good. I, I think they're, they're pretty great lights for how much you pay for them. I think I prefer the diode dynamics a lot more. Uh, just they're a higher quality light and um, you can really, really tell. I am going to eventually upgrade all of these lights to big old spots because I want to be able to see really, really far at night. There's been a few times that we've been driving through the desert in the pitch dark and I really wish in those times that I was able to see out a lot further. So all of these are going to be repositioned somewhere else and I'm going to put four big spotlights around the front of the van, give it that, you know, Baja 1000 racer look. Then I'm gonna turn them on to look cool. A lot of people have asked me about these lights. These are an aux beam LED light. That's about it. They're five by seven. You can find them on Amazon. And uh, their light pattern is actually pretty good. I've been pretty happy with them. Would definitely buy again. They look kind of cool, you know, like that. Blade Runner 2049 look. So at this point, I have talked at length about the suspension setup that we have on the van, but I will reiterate that we have a Weltec design three inch spindle lift on the front with the stage one Fox shocks. And all of my reviews remain the same. It is a great product. I would seriously suggest if you have a Chevy Express Transit uh, or 40 Conline van, um, go with Weltec products. They're fantastic. I love this lift. And the coolest thing about it is it kind of works like a a portal uh, axle. It actually just drops the hub down three inches and leaves the suspension geometry exactly as it was from the factory, which is very, very important because those engineers knew what they were doing. To change that is just kind of putting unnecessary wear on your front suspension, like the ball joints and stuff like that. Anyway, I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. Really great product, three inch lift from Weltec Design, thumbs up. An added benefit to having the three inch Weltec left spindle is that we can fit a 285 75 16 Firestone Destination MT2. There's a mouthful. Uh, these tires have been fantastic thus far. They actually came off my Toyota pickup Thomas. We had the same rim size so we just switched over the tires to these steel rims and this has been a great tire thus far. It does a really great job of squatting when we let out the air so we get lots of traction. They're relatively quiet. Um, the wear has been pretty good so far. Betty is 8,600 pounds, so she's definitely no teeny tiny little lightweight vehicle. And I think that the lug wear has been pretty decent so far. Yeah, really great tire, lots of traction. They look cool. 
that's the most important part, looking cool. All right, so probably one of the most commented aspects of Betty is the paint. And the paint is indeed Raptor liner. So that is like a box liner uh, spray on material and we love it so far. My Toyota pickup back at home is actually coated with the same stuff and it's super, super tough if you do it correctly. What we did on this paint job is we actually uh, got a tinting company in Calgary, Alberta to mix up uh, custom colors for us. And, and then of course we just got this really cool retro color scheme. But yeah, the Raptor liner so far is great. Um, we could pretty much drive through trees and cactus all day and not really worry about it. The only downside I'd say is that it's a little bit harder to clean. Getting dirt and mud and stuff out of the paint uh, can be a bit of a challenge and you can't wash it like you would uh, a car that has a nice smooth paint job. You kind of have to hit it with a pressure washer and down here in Mexico, they don't often have pressure washers. So we haven't washed the van in like more than a month. All right, coming to the rear of the van, we're gonna talk about another aspect of the suspension that I have waxed on poetic about. We've got a Welltech progressive leaf spring with a three and a half inch lift and a 5,000 pound load capacity on the rear. This has been a key component to our very, very effective suspension system. These springs are a little bit longer than the factory. They allow the van to articulate and flex a lot more in the back which is really important because this van is two-wheel drive and we have a locker in the rear diff so so long as we're keeping both of these wheels on the ground we have tons of traction and the springs just basically allow for that to happen thus far we haven't broken loose we haven't got stuck it's been a really really great addition or upgrade to the van suspension as well they they are a progressive leaf spring so they kind of load up when you need them to and they're really soft when you want them to be it's made gravel roads and washboard just that much more bearable and another aspect of the van that i often get asked about uh the rear bumper Yes, I also built this one. I didn't really put a whole lot of thought into this rear bumper. I just wanted not stock. So I took the stock one off that was rusted and kind of bent and I built this out of uh, scrap steel and I think it turned out pretty good. So as you can see, we have uh, a dual swing out system. I didn't want a single swing out because that can uh, cause problems if you're ever like, you know, parallel parked or something like that and you need to get into the back door. So we have two swing outs, one for the tire, and of course one for our storage box back here. Oddly enough, I get a lot of questions about this box and people ask me where I got it. This aluminum box, all it is is just your standard aluminum toolbox for the back of a pickup. All I did was just turn it on its side, make a frame for it so that it stays upright. There you go, you got a, one of those fancy tall storage box. Right beside the storage box, I have integrated this handy ladder right here. This just allows me to get onto the roof so that I can clean the panels and so that I can also tilt the panels, but I'll talk about that in a moment. This actually came off of the old version of the bumper and I just added it along with the box. And then I can stand on the back tire just for easier access to the roof and everything. What we have on the inside of this box is our 20 pound propane cylinder on a remote ball valve. And so that means that we can turn on the propane from inside the van, it releases gas and it goes to our uh, heater and to our two burner stove there. One note I'll make is that it is a remote ball valve and it's not a solenoid. Solenoids heat up after time if they're fed power. And I just don't think that's very safe beside, beside a you know, explosive gas. So right here is the surfboard rack. And golly, you guys love this thing. I get asked about this rack all the time. What I did to make it work is I have a hook that hooks onto the drip rail at the top. And then you can see at the bottom, it's just actually bolted through the body. I used rib nuts, drilled holes through, and yeah, they just bolt in. Right here is our solar shower. I don't know how much water it carries, but it carries enough for like three or four showers. So all we do to uh, get pressure in here is we have a little DeWalt battery powered compressor. We just put it on top here, thread it in, uh, pressurize the cylinder, put a hose on the end, and then we have pressurized water. It's a really great system. This costs us maybe about 120 bucks Canadian to build. And it's a great alternative if you don't want to buy like the road shower or whatever the other brands are out there and it's super easy to build. All right, so I will now demonstrate for you 
how the solar panels work. And there you go, tilting solar panels. So this is one of the new innovations that I've actually made to the van since we've hit the road. These solar panels uh, used to be on just like a prop stick right in the middle. And they would just swing down and hit the top of the, the roof and that's how they were there. Unfortunately, uh, wind gusts came along and blew these panels straight over, wrecking the frame down at the bottom. And I didn't want that to happen again, so what I did instead is I just drilled holes in the frame. And so I just take these lag bolts with a butterfly nut on the end, put them through the frame, and then it locks the panels in place so that they can't go up or down. And it's been wor working really, really great so far. So you can see it's just a really simple solution that I made while on the road and it has worked out great so far. When these panels are tilted at 45 degrees to the sun, it like doubles their output or input. Uh, it's really, really crazy how much more solar power we collect when these guys are tilted. So big upgrade if you um, don't have tilting panels, I'd seriously, seriously suggest doing so uh, if you can on your van. I've made a video about this. This is our Starlink flat mount. It's been working like 90% thus far and I did it really fast and loose. This right here is just a uh, piece of polycarbonate or Lexan, whatever you want to call it. We just cut the back off the dishy and glued it down to this piece of Lexan and it's been working. So now we can drive with it on and don't have to set it up. That right there, that is our uh, wood stove chimney hatch. And so I can just open that hatch right there, flip it up, put our flue pipe in there, and then have a working chimney. You guys will find out soon enough that we actually have a wood stove inside of the van and it was made by a company called tinystove.com and I'll talk about that when we get there. I also forgot to mention, we put a high top on the van. So this high top is provided by a company called High Top Vans. They're based in Washougal, Washington. It's Micah and Lindsay that run the business. They do the installation and provide the high top. And uh, they're great people. I would really suggest if you guys want to do a high top for your van, check them out, High Top Vans. They're on Instagram and they have a website, High Top Vans. I'll, I'll put it right here, right, right here maybe right there I don't know anyway uh, check them out if you want a high top we went with a 17 inch TV top on the van and we did that for a very important reason it was the lowest top that we could put on the van that would allow Megan to stand inside it's the highest top that we could do with also being able to fit the van into a container because we intend to go to South America at some point and um, we want to be able to ship the van over the Darien Gap and then back from Argentina. So, and the van actually sits just over eight and a half feet. So if I air down the tires, we should be able to get a van, this van, into a container. Well, all right. With all that being said, it is now time to move on to the interior of the van. Welcome to Mi Casa. Our castle? How do you say our castle? So starting here at the entryway, there's a few little innovations that we've put in here that are kind of fun. Uh, you'll see right down here, this is actually a storage area that um, I kind of just shoved in there. We store our sandals in there. Of course, sandals often come in wet or dirty uh, or sandy or whatever. So just having this kind of little nook here to store those, it means that they don't go into the van, you know, lessening the amount of dirt that you already bring into the van. It was really important for me to have a lot accessible or reachable um, from outside of the van. So I can actually turn on all the lights, um, the water pump and the exterior light from outside of the van. They're all switched right here. Another thing that I get asked about a lot is this right here. So you may recognize this as a Lagan style table, which it is. What I have done here is I have actually welded a bracket onto the B pillar of the van that holds the base of the Lagan table so that when we have the seat swiveled, um, I can simply move it into place and then have a whole editing bay in here. It's just a matter of welding a very simple bracket right to the B pillar and it's worked out great. I don't really have any plans or anything like that. A lot of people ask me for plans. All it is is a piece of angle iron and plate that are welded together and then welded to the B pillar and I can mount this handy dandy Lagan style table on there. 
This little drawer here is one of those um, easy, easy to access drawers that just has all of our toiletries or, or bathroom stuff in it. Um, one of our favorite features about the entryway of the van anyway, is this little door right here. Um, this is our pee funnel. So if we pull this out, it provides a place for us to be able to go pee in the van. This is really great for allowing us to stay in the van when it's really cold outside, don't have to get out. We do have a, like a separating toilet on board, which I'll show you, but this is just like a great little thing that, you know, we can quickly pop out the pee funnel, pee, and then go back to sleep at night. All right, welcome to the interior of the van. Believe me, it looks a lot bigger in here than it actually is. Just a disclaimer. Right behind me here is the pantry storage that goes over the um, driver cab area. This area provides a massive storage for food. The downside to it, unfortunately, is that it gets quite hot. So you can't really store anything uh, in there that melts easily. Uh, we've had chocolate melt in there and stuff like that. But aside from that, it's been really great having this storage space over the front. Right here, this little cabinet beside me is our, what we call the coffee corner. It's just where we store all of our coffee and stuff. This has been fantastic. Having an area specific for coffee, mugs, grinders, AeroPress stuff, uh, whatever. And if you stick your head in there, it's like you're in a coffee shop, which was wonderful. Right beside me is this um, nice big uh, closet that we store all of our jackets and sweaters and eggs and fire extinguisher and towels and um, yeah it's, it's just been a great storage area it's always nice to have like an actual kind of standing closet for jackets so you don't have to like fold them up or anything like that if they're like a little bit wet it's not a really big deal you're just gonna stuff them in there as well you can see that we have a nice big mirror so that Meg can do her makeup and stuff like that right here so right behind me here um, this is actually our refrigerator and this is a uh, set power refrigerator that I think it's like 47 quarts or liters or something like that. We got this one specifically because it's very square and I find that a lot of uh, refrigerator manufacturers, the 12 volt ones, um, they tend to have kind of like wasted space when they're like got curves and stuff like that. So this one is just like a box. We've added this uh, nice countertop on, on top of the lid so that um, you know we can prep food. I can use this as a, like a mouse area when I'm working at my computer right here. All right, so just moving over to the kind of kitchen area right here. Um, right here, we've got our Greystone two burner propane stovetop. It's got this nice glass top on the, over, over the burners. This has been a really great stove. It's fairly large, so you can fit, you know, more or less two medium sized pots on the top. And the glass top that comes down just allows you to put kind of you know, lighter stuff on top, adding to your counter space, whatever. This has been a great product. It's only found on American Amazon as far as we know. We have not been able to find this one on Canadian Amazon. So just FYI for all my Canadian homies out there. Underneath we got this very conveniently placed uh, cutlery drawer. And inside of the cutlery drawer we have uh, cutlery and sharp things and uh, things that uh, Meg uses to cook. Underneath here is a cupboard for all of our pots, pans, kettle, uh, cutting boards. So this right here is Meg's spice rack. This was uh, something that was top priority for her when I was building van, so I made sure that that was put here. And I think it's, uh, it worked out really well. Um, it's right below one of our windows on either side of the high top. It kind of adds a nice little aesthetic when you enter into the van. Earlier I was talking about our propane system. So this right here is the switch for the external ball valve uh, on our propane. So all I have to do is flick the switch, turns on the ball valve outside, and then we can get um, you know, propane in the van. So right here is our Propex uh, heater controller. We have a Propex, I think it's a 2211. It's, I think a two kilowatt propane heater. It's been good, although um, I'm not entirely sure. I think I have to adjust the settings, but it's kind of like trying to fill a pool with a garden hose. 
in here. Uh, it does keep the van warm and it's on demand heat, so we're really thankful for it. I think I need to figure out how to get more heat out of it somehow because I've seen other people with propane heaters and they seem to heat up way quicker. Right here, we just have some additional lighting for the kitchen and around the bed area. Uh, everything is on a dimmer. Um, this is another thing that was a non-negotiable for Megan is uh, all of her lights have to be on a dimmer, which I totally agree with. It's a, it's a great thing to have to be able to lower the light in here so it's not so bright all the time. I'll make a point of mentioning that um, all of this maple trim and also the countertops came off of my parents' property. So big thanks to my parents for um, supplying a lot of the wood for this build. Um, the door handles that we have on here are off the beaches of the island that my parents live on. And all of the cabinetry was made out of 5 8 Baltic birch ply. I think in hindsight I might have done half inch ply just because you know it's that much lighter, that much thinner. So going over to this side of the kitchen area, this is actually what I call the water unit. Inside of this box we have about 70 liters worth of water which lasts us roughly 10 days uh, depending on how our water consumption is. But I mean it's been working really great so far. Built into the countertop we actually have a sink um, which we don't actually use as a sink. We use it as vegetable and fruit storage now. I'll say to people that are pr prospective builders that um, seriously consider your sink usage because if you have a limited amount of water, it doesn't really make sense to be filling up a sink and washing your dishes. When we go to wash our dishes, we use as little water as possible and it doesn't make sense for us to be just like filling this up, washing our dishes and then draining it. So a sink doesn't really make sense. I know it's kind of something that it's nice to have and I think that we do like having it to a certain degree, but I don't know, I'm, I kind of question whether or not we really need it in here. Going forth from that, uh, of course we have our water spout here. This guy is, is just supplied by a 12 volt pump coming from one of the three jerry cans that we have down here. Uh, we've got a little bit of additional counter space here that can flip up. We never actually use this. I need to make it bigger, but I wanted to make sure that we had as much counter top space as possible because that is prime real estate in a van. Underneath, we have three 23 liter jerry cans that have quick connects on the top and then a hose going down to the bottom. So whenever we run out of water in one jerry can, it's just a matter of moving the hose over to the next jerry can. And then the really great thing about having a jerry can system is I can just pull these out, bring them into a purificata or even go to a river and fill them up and put them back inside. I don't need a pump to fill up our water. It's just one of those one of those choices that we made because we wanted to be able to fill water really easily, but we really like doing it this way. It's worked really well for us. On the inside of the cabinet near the back, we have a two-stage clear source water filtration system. It has the charcoal filter and the 0.02 micron medical grade filter. We feel really protected in terms of water filtration and it's been great. We have actually filled up in rivers before and just like plugged our water in and, and drank it and have not been sick as of yet. And of course we plan at some point to be going down to South America. So it's important that we have some level of water filtration on board with us. And a quick point before I switch positions with the camera here, you may have noticed that I'm sitting on this little white box and this white box is our garbage stool and it's a movable, uh, kind of stool that we can move around on the floor here. It contains our garbage and our recycling and it has a nice butt pad on top so that um, we can sit down. And this has been absolutely key for me in here because I cannot stand completely in here. Um, if I try and stand, I have to kind of hunch. But having this has been a total game changer for my back and knees. Okay, so welcome to the back of the interior of the van and this area is where things got really interesting to build. I wanted when I was building this van to uh, maximize the amount of storage space that we had, the use of the vertical and horizontal space in here. I wanted it to be comfortable and aesthetically pleasing and hyper functional. At this point maybe you're wondering where the heck our bed is. I'm actually sitting on it. This is a fold out bed that I will demonstrate in a moment but I'll talk quickly about uh, kind of what we have back here. Of course we added the high top which gave us a lot more vertical space so I made the decision to make our seating area that's also our bedding area a little bit higher. I just use this area as kind of like a, a step or like a comfortable place to 
put our feet and I filled it with storage. So I've got storage nook down here and then under my feet, um, I've got another storage nook right here. Meg loads this full of uh, canned goods and food and stuff like that. You know, especially for canned goods that's heavy, like putting them lower in the van so we have a lower center of gravity is really great. Right over here, we actually have a laundry hamper. This is something that uh, we actually made a conscious decision to have. In our old build, we had kind of like a nook where we just crammed all of our laundry and we figured that it would be a better idea to have a dedicated laundry hamper where we can store all of our dirty laundry out of sight, out of mind. Over on this side, you see this little guy right here. This is Tiny Tim, the tiny stove. This was made by my friend Andres of tinystove.com. His company is based in Switzerland, so if you're thinking about getting one uh, stove like this, uh, just keep that in mind. But as far as I know, he is the only guy that has made a stove, a wood stove, that is this small. And this little stove, um, I can't really, show you exactly like how small it is but let's say the footprint is about that big so it's like six inches by six inches roughly believe it or not this thing keeps this entire space nice and toasty warm the only downside is that you have to feed it a little bit more i love having wood stove on board because you know if we're going to be sitting out in the cold running our propane heater all day long it's just draining on power and you're burning a lot of gas that you have to pay for so if you have a saw or an axe with you um, it's really great if you're in an area that you can go and cut wood to go out cut your wood and then you can burn your solid fuel in here and this keeps us you know toasty warm all day long for free under here uh, we have this little hatch and we just put a bunch of kindling in there with a knife to make kindling and stuff right over here this cabinet is uh my charging cabinet where i charge all batteries for electronics and stuff like that right under here this space is actually a space for more canned goods and random food we can also access our propex heater under here on either side of my head here and behind me are clothing cabinets so on this side meg has clothing storage here and then clothing storage down here i've got this cabinet here and then around the back we've got toiletries in here up above right here is one of the innovations that um really makes sense for us and really works well and i'm really proud of and i think it's one of those things that um, some people might really appreciate seeing so this is a dishes storage that is off-road proof i had all my dishes in the shop with me when i was building it and i kind of built a box around it i made it so that uh, the dishes lock in place um, but are easily removed so if i try and pull these guys out i can't but if I pull them out individually, I can pull them out really easily. They go in easy, and I'm really excited with how it turned out, and it's been working flawlessly, which I'm really, I'm, I'm really proud of. I mentioned that I was gonna show you guys how this worked. Um, our fold-out bed, which uh, lots of people ask me how it works. Flip this out, this is just an extra little support. And then we just lift, like so. Now we have our full bed so this is six and a half feet long by four feet wide i can extend my full body length in there when it comes time to fold it back up it's just a matter of pulling this tab here pushing with your knees go. that's that your bed has now turned into a couch again so the great thing about this bed is that it's very, very easy to design. You need a few key things. You need a surface for the, the actual bed to slide on. These two kind of ledges are what I used and I put wax on these ledges so that uh, the bed slides easier. And then you need a four by eight sheet of plywood that's cut into four pieces. Of course it's four by eight, so I cut it down to six and a half and then cut the, the six and a half pieces into four pieces. I have a piece at the very back that is anchored that allows a space for all of our bedding behind the actual couch itself and then we have two three and four these two pieces back here are hinged so that they can do this so of course you put a hinge on the inside and then this piece down here is hinged so that it can do this like that so when you pull it out it just it's just two hinges pull it out it, it flattens super easy the great thing about this particular design is that it also gives you access to 
the stuff underneath the bed. We have a few things underneath the bed that we need to access from the inside of the van. So we just put them kind of towards the front and then they're easily accessed uh, through the inside of the van, which is uh, really, really convenient. One of the things that I've added to the van since we started driving and living out of the van is a workspace for Megan. So Meg has started working online and for her to be sitting right here with the computer right here is just not very comfortable for her. So I have actually made a desktop space for her. Under here we have, we have this piece of wood and this piece of wood simply goes like this slides in there and Meg now has a workspace to put her computer and she can sit here comfortably. All this is is just a piece of wood that slots into two pieces of aluminum C-channel and we can just take it out and store it underneath the bed when we're not using it and it's not in the way. So some last kind of like little details about the interior back here. We have this kind of bookshelf over our heads when we sleep. This is actually one of the last existing portions of Meg's original build um, that has kind of stood the test of time. Um, we have additional like storage cubbies down here for uh, toiletries, stuff like that. And um, yeah, just having a bookshelf like directly overhead has been really nice to have. And we can put our phones up here. I put uh, USB chargers on, like, on the back side here so we can charge our phones. So right here, you'll see that we have Meg's plant shelf. Uh, Meg insisted that we have at least some space for her plants. So and we've got this nice little shelf up here. We've also got this kind of area for our keys and headlamps. Again, it's accessible from outside of the van. So really easy to grab keys or headlamp whenever uh, you need it. As per mentioned, we do actually have a separating toilet in the van. Um, it's stored right down in this compartment here. And this right here, is called a Boxio toilet. Now Boxio is designed and manufactured in Rostock, Germany and I actually really really like this product. The great thing about it is first off it's super low profile, um, really easy to store, it's very boxy as per the name but fits into like you know a fairly small little compartment which is ideal. It's also very lightweight, it has a separate compartment for your urine and then a separate compartment for your solids and the gist of it is that you line the solids compartment with a biodegradable bag and you cover it with hemp husk once it's full you just tie up the bag and chuck it in the trash and everything is biodegradable there i know a lot of people like the idea of a composting toilet a lot more but i think that this is a really great option as well in those emergency situations or if you're on a beach that doesn't have a, a pit toilet or you have a, a place to to go to the bathroom and this has been really great for when we've camped in people's driveways or camped on like a really busy beach uh, we've been able to use this to go in and it's been great and it doesn't smell which is also a great thing this guy is a boxio toilet max plus so if i take off this bottom part i've got a storage container in here and i've just got like all of our biodegradable bags i've got the hemp husk and the boxio shake which is just like a airtight storage compartment so that the hemp husk doesn't absorb any moisture or anything like that out of the air yeah and this has been great i really like this thing all right electrical system i've talked a lot about this electrical system in the past so i'm not gonna go into crazy detail about it the major points we're using rare earth element solar a canadian solar electric company based in vancouver i really really like their products i'm not being paid to say this if you are canadian and looking for other options re-solar for your solar electric needs they've done some interesting little innovations um, they've kind of done a lot of combining so this is the whole electrical system right here we have 200 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate that is Canada proof, so it's it's actually a heated battery. It's self-heating, so if it gets really cold, um, if you know anything about lithium, it has to be a certain temperature for it to be optimal performance, so it'll actually heat itself. It is 200 amp hours in the footprint of a 100 amp hour case, which is awesome, uh, especially for those of you with a small van. We are going to add an additional 200 amp hours to our electrical system. This is just so that we have a little bit more length to our say, stay on a cloud day we have 330 watts of re solar panel on the roof um, just having the little extra battery life is is something that we want to do this inverter is a 1500 watt inverter charger so we can actually charge from shore power 
that is another uh, innovation that Resolar has done that I haven't seen other brands do. There is of course the 3000 watt inverter charger offered up by some other companies, but I haven't seen anyone do a 1500 watt. And in the event that you don't need a 3000 watt inverter, they're super heavy and super big. There's now an option for a 1500 watt, which is great. It'll power pretty much anything you need aside from like an induction cooktop or like a microwave. This right here, this is a 40 amp DC-DC MPPT. So it, it combines your DC-DC charging and your solar charging into one unit. It's fairly small, but very, very effective. And I really love the small form factor of it. You sacrifice like a little bit of efficiency on the MPPT side. And then when you're driving and you're getting that uh, alternator power or starting battery power, um, it actually just switches to a dedicated DC-DC charge. We have two separate uh, 12 volt distribution blocks. We've got kind of like a low amperage one and a high amperage one. So all of our big battery connections go to this one and it's on a master switch. And then this is kind of like a low amperage one. Um, we have a 12 volt swapped uh, Starlink system. So we use the Meanwell 12 volt to 48 volt converter, the Yaoshang uh, PoE injector, and then the GLI net uh, cheap um, router. Everything is on on breakers and I tried to make it as safe as I could. That's pretty much the entire electrical system, everything that I can talk about. Uh, I will mention some other little details. Uh, we've got our walkie-talkie mounts right here for convoys whenever we find ourselves in one. We don't have like a really great working sound system in the van so we just have a Bluetooth speaker that I've made a spot for. There's 12 volt charging in here so this stays charged all the time. These guys are our trailer lights that now double as map lights and and then we got some sunglasses storage up here and then of course our headliner is a Mexican blanket which is a fun little uh, thing that I did someone actually asked about this right here this guy is a quad lock um, phone case mount and it, this was actually meant for like a bedside table and we just I modified it so it fit in the van Meg's got a RAM mount for her phone over there. And then this right here is actually a Arca plate mount made by Niwer so that I can put my camera right here. If I ever wanna jump out of the van to take a photo or get video, I just press this button and out pops the camera and it's right there for easy use. This right here is a new little innovation and I will show you a quick little thing of the installation. I'm going to install this and this is a dash cam. Guys, it Biofo sent me this dash cam. They got in contact with me and quite frankly, I needed a dash cam. So I agreed to this uh, little collaboration. I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to install, but I will first show you exactly what is in this box. There's the box. There's the teeny tiny little dash cam. The mana card, power adapter. And as well, they have this uh, HK4 hardware kit. All right, so they give you these uh, like pads or something like that. You peel the one side like this off stick it up here okay so now now this is hidden by my mirror and i can still access it pretty easy and i just gotta run all the wires so that is a dash cam made by viofo and this was actually a little collaboration thing that i need to mention uh, these guys sent me a free uh, dash cam for me to kind of review super easy to install very very tiny and all it is really is just a tiny little camera with a Sony sensor in it and a memory card. I just have that there as extra assurance that if we ever have an accident, if there's no witnesses, then at least I have a little dash cam thing there, which I think is something that everyone should put on their vehicle. I've been kind of screwed over twice because there was no witnesses at an accident that wasn't actually my fault. So far my review of this is it's great. It does what it's supposed to and it's easy to install and um, reasonably priced. So check out Viofo dash cams. I think they have a few other ones that are kind of fancier and stuff like that. So, all right, last but not least, the rear storage area underneath the bed. This one's real exciting. Look, stuff. All jokes aside, it's a big storage area, just full of our stuff. I guess a few details about it. We have storage inside the doors. Uh, again, like I tried to make nooks and crannies for our stuff everywhere I could. Going back to, to Boxio, we use their Boxio Solo system, which is a Eurobox system for storing tools, uh, extra materials. These boxes are fantastic. Yeah, otherwise it's just your generic storage area. Um, one of the upgrades that we intend to do is actually putting an additional fuel tank uh, between the frame rails back here. 
Uh, that is just obviously to extend our range um, for some of the countries that we're likely to be traveling through. And um, also we're going up north this summer, going to be doing the Dempster Highway. Yeah, we just want to have the extra range. Probably going to stuff an extra 15 gallons or something like that underneath here. And um, that should get us, you know, pretty close to a thousand kilometer range. All right, folks, I think that's pretty much everything that I have to say to you guys at this point. I think I have more or less covered every little thing within the van that um, has been really working well, or I don't think there's anything that hasn't been working particularly well in the van thus far. So I hope you guys enjoy this video that maybe it gave you some new ideas or helped you in some kind of way. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate all of you who choose to watch our videos week in and week out and uh, comment and like and all of that stuff keep on doing it you're helping us grow uh, it's a free little thing that you can do for us that we really really appreciate all right that's it for now until the next one remember to keep on roaming peace